In James 2, verses 14 to 26, together, What good is it, my brothers, if someone says he has faith but does not have works? Can that faith save him? If a brother or sister is poorly clothed and lacking in daily food, and one, and one of you says to them, Go in peace, be warm, be warm and filled, without giving them the things needed for the body, what good is that? So also faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. But someone will say, You have faith and I have works. Show me your faith apart from your works, and I will show you my faith by my works. You believe that God is one, you do well. Even the demons believe and shudder. Do you want do you want to, to be shown, shown you foolish person, person that faith apart from works is useless? Was, was not Abraham our father justified by works when he offered up his son Isaac at the altar? You see that faith was active along with his works, and faith was completed by his works. And the scripture was fulfilled that says, Abraham believed God, and it was counted to him as righteousness. And he was called the friend of God. You see that a person is justified by works and not by faith alone. And in the same way, was not also right. The prostitute justified by works when she received the messengers and sent them out by another way. For us the body apart from the spirit is dead, so also faith apart from works is dead. Let's pray. Lord, no one is worthy, O Father. No one in this world is worthy, O Lord, for we are all sinners, Lord. Come before you, O Father. And yet, because of your love and your grace, because of your mercy, you have called us, Lord God, to be here. You have convicted us, O Lord God, to be here. You, you lead us, Lord God, to where your people is. And I just pray, Lord God, that I will be able to preach your word based on who you are. That I will have the confidence, Lord God. That I will be able to share and magnify your greatness, Lord God. That is working in a person who is unworthy. A person who is a sinner. As you continue to transform my heart, O oh Lord. And I pray, Lord God, for the people who are going to listen to your word. May it do the same thing, O oh Lord. That it open our hearts and calls us to action. That it opens our heart and calls us to respond to your word. To not just say that we believe but to live that we believe. And so I submit to you, Lord God, this morning, in the name of Jesus Christ, as our Lord and our Savior. Amen. Good morning, church. Now, we are still in our personal growth as a Christian, and I believe if we know you, Tanga Kristo, anon, we want to be mature sa atong pagtuo. We want to be mature sa atong pagka-Christian. We want to be mature sa atong faith. And na yung mga times na frustrating kayo. Nga bisa nun saan yung magbasa ang Bible, bisa nun saan yung paningkamot, you still don't understand. Maglisod kag sabot sa Bible. Na yung times nga bisa nun saan yung magtry o usab. Bisa nun saan yung magpaningkamot. Yung mausab ka, it's just so hard to do. Ang ending, dili na lang. James is going to show us, asa di magsugod ang kausaban? Asa di ay magsugod ang pagtuo? As Christians, it should be our desire to know more about who God is. Na unsaon man, para mas dali na ko masabta ng Bible, ang iyang pulong, unsaon man, mas makita na to ang blessings ni Lord sa atong kinabuhi, amid sa suffering and challenges, nga mas ma-experience na ang presensya sa Diyos sa bisan unsang pagsulay sa kinabuhi. And today, James is going to help us evaluate asa na dapit, asa na dapit sa tong pagtuo. 
Tinood ba jud kaha nga buhi ang atong pagtuo kang Kristo? Is your faith genuine? Is it true? Is it real? Are you putting it into practice? Imo bang gina-apply imong pagtuo sa kinabuhi? Or tama na ra ba na sa pag sa huna-huna wala sa buhat? James is going to illustrate the difference of a dead faith versus a living faith. Unsa day ang makita nato sa patay nga pagtuo ug unsa atong makita sa buhi nga pagtuo? Now, kanya itong topic karon isa ni sa mga dili-dali kayo masabdan. Even some theologians struggled with this topic. There are even other religions nga lahi ilang pagsabutan niya. O ban, muingon nga si James ug si Pablo, dili magkasinabot, dili pariyog baruganan. Nga ang gisuwat daw kuno ni Pablo, ni Paul, and ang, ang James sa Bible, dili magkasinabot ilang statement bahin sa pagtuo. But the truth is, they have the same message but they have different contexts. Kung sa may nakalahi nila, they have different enemies, but their message is the same. Let me show you their commonality. And kano dili sila contradictory? Para klaro. Paul's message is the reason for salvation. Ano si Paul? Ang tubag sa kaluwasan, kaya ang pagtuo ni mo diya kang Kristo. Nga naman, because dili ni mo kaya luwason ang imong kaugalingon. Bisa pag-unsa ni mong paningkamot. So, unsa man ang imong gituhan kang Kristo? Nituo ka nga siya'y niluwas di mo? Nituo ka nga siya'y nibayad sa imong sala? Nituo ka nga siya'y niban, siya nabanhaw? O nituo sad ka nga na'y kinabuhin dayon? So, in short, Ana, si Paul, imong pagtuo ang makaluwas. Through faith alone, you are saved. Nga naman, kinsa man ang kontra ni Paul. Ang kontra ni Paul are the people who said, you need to do good works para maluwas ka nga dapat ma-perfect ni mo ang Ten Commandments and dapat mo adapt ka sa mga tradisyon sa Hudeo para maluwas ka. Now for James, his message is about the result of your salvation. Now ana sa James, if tinood yun nga naluwas ka, if you are truly saved, your faith will produce good works. And if tinood na saved yun ka, din mo niyang dapat nga makita sa imong kinabuhi. Now kinsa mo din kontra ni James, People who said, I have faith na ako'y pagtuo, but di ko kinahanglan o maayong binuhatan. Na karon ganito na ka kang Kristo, sure na dyan na ka, so no need na mabala ka bisan pag makasala. So based on ni Watay makita ang contradiction, same ra. Ang point lang is, lahi-lahi sa lag-enemy, but the same message. Through faith we are saved, and through this faith should reflect into our lives. Yes, naluwas ta pinaagi sa pagtuo, but ang tinuod nga pagtuo, ma-prove pa maagi sa mga yung binuatan. Sama sa punuan. If tinuod nga na itig supply o tubig, o nindot ang yuta, then mo resulta sa tiyo, o nindot nga bunga. Yes, we are saved through faith alone, but our good works will prove if our faith is genuine or not. Our faith at ang pagtuo ni Kristo should reflect sa tibok na itong kinabuhi. Tibok na itong kaugalingon. So I hope that this message is clear to us. Let's go to our verse, to our passage in verse 14. What good is it, my brothers, if someone says he has faith but does not have works, can that faith save him? Na itong basahon sa Bisaya. Mga kaigsunan ko, unsa may kapuslanan ko mo yung unang sa katao, may pagtuo ako. Apan nang iyong binuatan, wala magpamatood na siya may pagtuo. Makaluwas ba ka niya ang maong nga pagtuo? James is like saying, usang may gamit sa imong pagtuo kung wala kayo may iyong binuatan. Dagan kayong maingon nga, mao niya akong pagtuo, mao niya akong gituuhan, mao niya akong gisunod. Ana si James, bisan unsa pa na imong gituuhan diha, huwag niya po na ipulos kung di na makita sa imong binuatan. Kung saan man na imong pagtuo, kung ang imong kinabuhi, imong binuhatan, dili mo reflect sa imong gituuhan. Yes, ang atong kaluwasan, madawat nato sa pagtuo by faith alone. But if naluwas jud ka, if tinuod jud nga naluwas ka sa imong pagtuo, then it should reflect sa imong kinabuhi. Now remember that James is talking to Christians. Katong mga tao nga niingon na ito ni Kristo. Now, we can also prove this na Kristohano ni sila that's because of the word na gigamit ni James. He said, mga kaigsuunan ko, 
my brothers and sisters in Christ. Ana si James, unsa may pulos sa inyong pagtuo kung dili makita sa inyong kinabuhi? Kung nay mo ingon ninyo nga Christian ko, pero dili makita sa kinabuhi, mao ba na ang pagtuo nga makaluwas? James is clear, certainly no, dili. James is saying, taman ra sa storya ang pagtuo pero wala sa kinabuhi. That's not a true faith. That's a false faith. One of the marks that James is telling us about false faith is this. False faith focuses only on words and not by action. I can say, Kristuhanon ko, pero wala sa binuhatan. And that's how James said it. That's, that's a false faith. Di na mao ang pagtuo nga makaluwas. And then James gives us an example. James in verse 15 to 16, at huwag yapong basahon sa Bisaya para mas dali masabtan. Pananglit, maigsuon kita na magkinahanglan og sanina o pagkaon. Huwag ang usakan ninyo mo yung niya, hinaot nga panaling, panalanginan ka sa Diyos. Ayaw pagpatugnaw, ayaw pagpagutom, pero wala ka kay gibuhat. Wala man lang kakahatag sa iyong gikinahanglan. So, unsa may mas maayo na himo nga ni Ana. Ana si James, ibutang ta lang. Naatay fellow Christian nga ni need og food og sanina. Nya ato lang ingon og pray lang. Amping. Pero kita nga na ikahatag, wala man lang tanita. Maayo ba na muna yung ni James? Sakto ba na? Kita ta nga, gigutom sila, kita ta nga, grabe ang kalisod, tama na lang ta sa sigilang puhon, amping. Do we only focus on words? James is like saying, another mark of a false faith is this, apathetic towards others. Apathetic means why paki? Why concern? Absence of feelings. Apathy. Taman restorya. And what pa joy paki? Is that how a saving faith looks like? James is clear. No, that's a false faith. James is like saying, para asa man ay mong pag-ingon nga, hala ka lo, oy, luya aning bata, oy, luya aning tawana, oy, kung taman ra ka diha sa imong words. And then James said on verse 17, mauusab ang pagtuo, kung dili inubanan sa mayong binuhatan, Kana nga pagtuo, walay pulos. Why kapos lana? And I guess, klaro. Klaro ang pagkaingon ni James. If your faith does not reflect into your life, then kana nga pagtuo, walay pulos. Useless. In another translation, a false faith is dead. It's a dead faith. Lifeless. Why kinabuhi? And that's another mark of a false faith. A lifeless faith. A dead faith. Useless nga faith. Sa question pa ni James, mao ba na ang pagtuo nga makaluwas? A lifeless, useless, dead faith? I don't think so. Now, if atong isummarize ang verse 14 and 17, it goes like this. James, in the beginning verse of verse 14, stated the problem. Ang problema, kaya ang, tao nga, why, ang pagtao nga maingon nga na ipagtuo pero ay buhat, kaya maayong binuhatan. And then verse 15 to 16, James illustrated nga nung problema na siya. Naghatag siya example. And then verse 17, din nagbuhat sa conclusion. Nga if mauni mong pagtuo, taman ra sa words, walay pakisoban, then ang kanis siya nga pagtuo, patay ni siya nga pagtuo. A lifeless, useless, dead faith. That's a good way to check our hearts. Do we have a dead faith? A useless faith. Do we believe in Christ pero taman ra sa ato ang ba, ba, taman ra sa words o di makita sa atong kinabuhi? And what James said, mga kaigsuunan ko, unsa na imong pagtuo? Useless ba na siya nga pagtuo? Do you even care for others? Do you care for those who are in need or taman ra ta sa storya? Now let me give you Let me share to you the technique, a good reminder in caring for others. Now, do you remember the time when you needed help? When people have extended their help to you? You have received help, mercy, and grace. So go and do the same thing to others. Jesus said, 
go and do likewise. The reason why other Christians will sacrifice their time, their resources, their self to help others, it's because of the reminder that Christ himself sacrificed his time, his resources, he sacrificed himself for the restoration of our relationship with him. So brothers and sisters in Christ, what faith do you have? Is it a useless, lifeless, dead faith? Or is it a faith that is anchored in Christ? And then on verse 18, James gave another a sample objection. Let me summarize verse 18, 18 to you. Na basi na imuingon sa inyo, lahi-lahi man tao gift. Nga ang akong gift kay akong pagtuo, ikaw kay imo ang gift kay ang mayong binungatan. And James answered, Sa so, unsang paagi man ako makita ang imong pagtuo sa Diyos kung wala kay mayong binuhatan. That's why Anna si James, I will show you that my faith is true and alive. I will show it by works. Ako ng ipakita ko kung sa katinod ang pagtuo pamaagi sa mayong binuhatan. It's not because lahi-lahi na gift. And I remember the time na nagtrabaho pa ko o BPO or call center. Na ako'y mga kailang nga ayak pa ko na kay bawo nga Christian di ay because dili makita sa ilang pagtuo. Di makita sa ilang kinabuhi. James is telling us that a genuine faith, a true faith is seen. It is demonstrated. Now James is starting to give us the mark of a true faith, a genuine faith. The mark of a true faith is this. It's not just words, but expressed in our actions. James said, I will show you. It means I will display it. That means ang tinood nga pagtuo is not just through words, but demonstrated to our actions. Express in our actions. Dapat dili masya kang uban na, Uy, Christian, day ka? Mara lagi dili lagi. It should be evident in how we live our life. Ang tinood nga pagtuo dapat makita sa kinabuhi. Di lang sa sood sa church, Di lang sud sa workplace, di lang sud sa balay, di lang sud sa skwilahan, but anywhere we go in whatever we do, it should be a lifestyle. Faith expressed in our actions should be our way of life. If we believe Christ, then following Him should be our way of life. Faith should be evident in our life. Now the question is this, mga kaigsoonan, is our faith demonstrated through our actions? Sa wali pa ni Josh last Sunday, you are the light of the world. You It, it cannot be hidden. Ang tinood nga na ipagtuo, makita sa uban. A light cannot be hidden. So let your light shine before others. You are the salt of the earth. You are few, but you affect everyone. Sama sa asin, ingunan ang Kristuhanon. And that is only if we have true or genuine faith. Pagkanta mo evaluation to check yourselves. Genuine faith is demonstrated through ourselves. So evaluate yourself. How do you take care of yourself? Do you take care of your body as the temple of the Holy Spirit? Do you make sure that what you do to your body is God glorifying or is it self glorifying? Observe how the world is doing to their own body. What's the difference with yours? Genuine faith is demonstrated through our actions. So evaluate your actions. Do people see in my actions that I'm a Christian? How do I take care of my church, my family, and my community? Am I concerned about the needs of the community that God placed me? Genuine faith is demonstrated through words. So evaluate your words. When people hear me talk, can they recognize that I'm a Christian? How do I use my words in speaking to people? Are my words edifying, encouraging sa uban, loving sa uban? Musturya ba kong tinood? Do I speak the truth? Do I speak what is in the Bible? And it's just three evaluation. But genuine faith is demonstrated sa tong tibuok na pagkatao. That means everything sa tua. And in the following verse, in verse 19, Ana si James, Nagtuo ka ng ginoo sa lang. Good. You do well. Sakto na. Maayo. 
Pero did you know nga ang demonyo nagtuusad nga ang ginuusa lang? Nga sa ilahang pagtuo, ang kanilang mga demonyo sa ilahang pagtuo nagkurug pagani sa ilang kaidlo. Demons believed God and shuddered. James is like saying, ang tao nga patay ang faith, nga taman ra sa baba ang pagtuo, is just the same as what demons do. They believe. Taman ra sa huna-huna. James is saying, it's a satanic faith. Na itong karoon ang topic ni James, ha? this is what James is telling us. Remember nga, ang kaning book of James, kumbaga suwat ni siya. Kaning suwat gipada para sa mga Christian. That means ang iyang topic sa verse 14 is related sa iyang verse sa verse 26. So sa verse 14 and 19, James is comparing. Nga kaning mga tao nga focus lang sa ilang words, way pakisaw bang tao, people who are dead in their faith, this kind of faith is the same with demons. It's a satanic faith. Kabantay mong satanas, walay mayong binuhatan. Because it's a false faith. It's not genuine. Basin makaas mo nga, na de pagtuo ang mga demonyo. Na, that's why ana si James, ang demonyo sad nito sa ginoo. Asa ka na, dagan sa kalibutan ng mga atheist ko, agnostic ko, di ko mo to ginoo, amay pa ang yawa. May pa ang demonyo nito sa ginoo. Demons believed in God. They believe in the existence of God, but they don't trust God. Mona, if mo basa mo sa Bible, pag ang demonyo mga kita ni Kristo, makuyawan na sila. They even believe that Jesus Christ is God. And not only that, ang ilang pagtuo, napay appeal emotion. Dili lang intellectual, di lang kayo nakahibaw sila. But ang demonyo, sa ilang pagtuo, na emotions. James said, Demons shudder. Sabi siya pa, nagkurug sa kaadlo. But what they have is a false faith. It's not a saving faith. Di na makaluwas na pagtuo. Another mark of a false faith is this. False faith can be emotional and intellectual. The same with demons. Taman ra sa intellect, taman ra sa unahuna, ang ilang pagtuo. Nasila emotions, ilang kaadlo. But they don't trust God. And for us, ato ang mga tao, ang follower ni Christ, we can believe that God exists. Pwede ta mo to nga, naluwas ta, pinaagi ni Kristo. Yes, ni to. But tama na sa una-una, because pwede man ta mo ingon nga Christian core, ni to ko, at the same time, wat ay pagsalig sa gino. And this kind of idea is very common nowadays. Daghan mo ingon nga Christian ko, pero wala yung maayong binuhatan. Christian ko, pero walay pagsalig sa Ginoo. In time sa kalisod, mas piliun ako mo palayo sa Ginoo kaysa mo pa doon. Christian ko, pero dili makita sa kong pinabuhi. And that kind of thinking as per James, si James mismo ang niingon, is the same sa demonyo. Because ang pagtuo sa demonyo ay pagsalig sa Ginoo. Pwede ta makahibaw kung kinsa ang Ginoo. Pwede ta nga, mayo kita sa Bible. But faith is not just intellectual. Pwede ta nga, magilakilak ta sa worship. Kakakita ta sa itong sayup, sa itong mga sala, masakitan ta, makonsensya ta. Pwede ta maguol sa kayentang sa uban, lakaluoy. But faith is not just emotional. Faith is what happens after. Kung sa man dahil ni mong buhaton, after ni mong ma-experience ni Tanan. Because if taman ra ka sa huna-huna, taman ra ka sa emosyon, then same ra sa demonyo ang atong pagto. Mga egson, daghan kayo karon ng muingon ng kristohanon ko, pero walay pagsalig sa gino. Ang kristohanon nga walay pagsalig sa gino, sama ra sa gingon ni James, sama sa pagto sa demonyo. Ang tinood nga na'y pagto mo tapang sa uban. True faith is relational. That's another mark of a true faith. True faith, true faith is relational. It's the opposite of false faith. True, genuine faith respond to the needs of others. This is what Paul said to prove that he's contradicting si James, si Pablo, si Santiago. Galatians chapter six verse ten. Busa ko may kahigayunan. Di nato palabyo ng pagbuhat o maayong nato sa tanang mga tao o labi na gayod sa ato mga igsoon sa pagtuo. 
Our faith should not only be defended through words, but it also should be demonstrated through action. Samot na sa itong mga kauban sa pagtuo. To our fellow believers, true faith is relational. It responds to the needs of others. Ma Christian man or madili. And another mark of a true faith, James said, this kind of faith, this is a living faith. Kung ang false faith is dead, a lifeless faith, a useless faith, then true faith is not dead or useless. True faith is useful. It's living and working. That's another mark of a true faith. Useful faith, a living faith. It's an active faith. Compared sa dead faith, tama na sa una-una, wala gigamit sa kinabuhi. But true faith is useful and active sa life sa isa ka Kristuhanon. And ang proof na active siya sa kinabuhi is makita sa iyang binuhatan. That's why James said on the following verse, Do you want to be shown, you foolish person, that faith apart from works is useless? You know, unsan ni kabugat sa Bisaya? Kung basahon sa Bisaya, buang-buang ka. And with exclamation point pa na. Buang-buang ka. Gusto mo ba ang pamatundaan ko kanimo ang pagtuo mo walay mga binuhatan, walay kapuslanan. Strong words, buang-buang ka. Buang-buang daw ka. If di ka mo tuo nga, ang faith walay bunga, walay maayong binuhatan, is a dead or lifeless, useless faith. And it's the same with the demon's faith. James is making a point. That's why he said, ganahan kag proof. I'll give you proof. Verse 21 to 24. You need to understand Abraham's life. Ana si James, ganahan kag proof. Sige, tagaan ti kag proof. Remember Abraham. Abraham was commanded by the Lord na ihala di ang anak. That means pat yun. That's the command of the Lord. Now, even before pa na command, Abraham already believed in the Lord. 100% Abraham believed God. It was the Lord who promised na tagaan siya og anak. So, gitagaan siya. Now, ang karon nga command ni Lord is ihalad yung anak, is sacrifice yung anak para sa ginoo. Na kung ikaw ang pabuhato na ni, kaya or dili, maanak man or igsuon, I don't think so, ingon anak ka sa'yo. But for Abraham, 100% nisalig siya ni Lord. He knows the Lord. Nisalig siya sa promise ni Lord. Na anak si Lord, nga nahi kinabuhin da yun. Nisalig siya anak. Nisalig siya, nga bisag pagkwaon ni Lord yung anak, siya man po na naghatag siya anak. So ang pagtuo ni Abraham, dili lamang intelektual. Dili taman lang sa baba. But ang pagtuo ni Abraham, inubanan sa lihok. His faith was demonstrated by his action. Tungod sa iyang pagtuo o pagsalig sa Diyos, willing niya i-sacrifice ang iyang anak. The faith of Abraham, inubanan sa lihok. He believed and trusted the Lord. And this faith was demonstrated by his willingness to obey. Demonstrated by his action. Shown by his willingness. You know, on some issues sa tao, we are not willing to obey the Lord. So say, we are not willing to obey the Lord unless na iklarong provision. Unless na iklarong kaugmaon. Sigurista kayo ta. Sometimes ang conviction, ang command ni Lord is uncertain. Sometimes ang conviction ni Lord is beyond human understanding. But if you believe and you trust Him and say yes to His command, say yes to His calling, that's the time you will see kung sa kamayo ang ginoo. That He is a provider, the protector, the peace giver, and that you can rest in His presence. Nga sure ka nga kuyog ni mo siya. Obedience comes first. Willingness comes first. And musunod rang ubang panginang lanon. Saligi si Lord. That's why verse 22, James said, You see that faith was active along with his works and faith was completed by his works. Sabi siya pa, Klaro kaayo ang pagtuo ni Abraham nga makita sa iyang binuhatan. Iyang willingness mo ay proof sa iyang faith. 
And then 23 and 24, James added, Abraham believed God and it was counted as righteousness. Ang makaluwas mao ang pagtuo, dili, maay dili ang maayong binuatan. Ang maayong binuatan na nagpamatuod ng iyang pagtuo is tinood. That his faith is true and genuine. Abraham believed God's word. Abraham put God's word above everything. God, this should be the priority of your life. Bisan pag walay provision na nagpaabot, bisan pa ang command ni Lord sa imuha, it doesn't make sense. For Abraham, I believe, sad mo sa nayang na feel. Gitagaan sa ganak, pagdako sa yang anak, ihalad rapo day gihapon, it doesn't make sense. But for Abraham, ang final say is the Lord. For Abraham, God's word is the ultimate truth. Abraham entrusted his life to the Lord and his word. In the same way, sa tuwa, we have the Bible. Bisa pagunsa nga translation, mabisaya ma English. The question is, do we entrust our lives to the Lord? Do we entrust our lives to his word? That's the last mark of a true faith. A true faith entrust his life to the Lord. When you say entrusted life, it means you give your life to the Lord. Siya na last says kung saan mong kinabuhut. Siya na magbuot. If makabasa mo sa story ni Abraham sa so Genesis chapter 22, every time manawag si Lord, kabulo mo sa itubag ni Abraham, Here I am, Lord. The willingness to give your life to the Lord is a sign of genuine faith. Here I am, Lord. The moment mo mataka, here I am, Lord. What do you want me to do today? How should I spend my time today, Lord? How should I spend my finances, the resources that you have blessed me, Lord? How should I build my relationship with others in the community that you have given me, Lord? Here I am. I entrust my life to you. I entrust my life to your word. Your word is the final authority in my life. I will follow you. I am willing and I will obey you, Lord. That's how genuine faith, how genuine true faith looks like. And James added another example. The story of Rahab. The story of Rahab is this. Nakadungog siya bahay sa ginoo sa Israel. Nakadungog siya nga kung unsa ka maayo, kung unsa ka powerful ang ginoo sa Israel. That he is a God of heaven and earth. And just by this information, Rahab believed in God of Israel. So the moment nga niabot ang spy sa Israel, gitabangan sila ni Rahab nga makaikyas. Gitaguan sila ni Rahab. And the same with Abraham. Rahab believed in God. She entrusted her life to the Lord. Bahala grisgo. Iyang kitaguan ang mga spies sa Israel. She was willing to serve the Lord. For her, si Lord ang mauna, ikaduhara yung safety. For Abraham, ikaduhara ang yung emotions, si Lord ang mauna. For Rahab, ikaduhara yung safety, si Lord ang mauna. That's how a genuine faith looks like. Entrusting your lives to the Lord. Lord, I give you my life. That means ikaw ang mauna, ikaw ang magbuot, Lord, on how I should live my life. So that's how a genuine faith look, looks like. Their actions are the result of the genuine saving faith. Then James closed this section in verse 26, stating his conclusion. Ang lawas nga walay spiritu patay. Mauusab ang pagtuo nga walay binuhatan, walay kapuslanan. Friends, let me ask you, kano nagservisyo man ka ni Lord? Tumod kay para maluwas ka. Kano mo ba sa mga Bible tumod kay para maluwas ka? Kano mag-lead mga Bible study? Mag-lead ka worship tumod kay para maluwas ka? James is clear. Ang kaluwasan na sa pagtuo na tinuod. Ang pagtuo nga na pagsalig sa gino. You are saved because you believed in God and you trust Him with your life. Wala ko na mas tor tungod kay para maluwas, na mas tor ko tungod kay sure ko nga luwas ko. Wala ko naglead og Bible study para maluwas, nilid ko Bible study tungod kay luwas na ko. Wala ko naglead og discipleship para maluwas, nagliid ko discipleship tungod kay luwas na ko. 
I'm already saved. Therefore, it should reflect into how I live my life. And I pray that we as a church should seek to grow in our faith and our faith that works. Church, practice your faith. And sometimes the root of the problem is our heart. Unless you are willing to believe and trust the Lord, believe that Jesus died for your sin, para muatag sa kaluwasan ni Believe that Jesus was resurrected from the dead para muatag sa paglaong nga doon ay kinabuhi. To believe that Jesus is coming back para muatag sa paglaong na kuyog taniya. And I pray that as a church, we develop and practice taking action of our faith, not just words, intellectual or emotions, but true work. Practice responding to the needs of others. Practice to live a life that has an active faith and entrust your life to the Lord. Don't be afraid to take risks. Put God first above everything as long as it's in line with the Word. May we as a church set God in His Word as our top priority in life, not just to read, but to apply it in our daily life. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, forgive us, O Lord, for who we are. Makasasala kay ming dako, Lord God. And yet, Lord, you have forgiven us. You have shown us your grace. And yet, Lord, you have loved us. That even, Lord God, at times, Lord, that we have a dying faith. That even at times, Lord God, we disobey you. We don't put you as the top priority. We don't put you as the above all things that we have in our lives, Lord. Forgive us, O Father. Forgive us of how sinful we are. Teach us, Lord God, to humble our hearts before you, Lord. Teach us, Lord God, about your salvation na pamaagi sa pagtuo. Teach us, Lord God, about sa maayong binuhatan na resulta sa tinood na pagtuo. Teach us, O Lord, to follow and obey you even if it doesn't make sense. Teach us, O Lord, to be willing that whenever you call us, whenever you command us, our answer should be here I am, O Lord. I am willing. I will follow. I will obey. Teach your servant, O Father, to live a life worthy of your name. That we as Christians, that we all who profess as Christians, will demonstrate our faith to ourselves, to our actions and to our words, through everything in us. I give an offer to you, this church, Lord God, the church, the church you have placed in our hands. I give an offer to you, Lord God, Barangay Apas, Lord, even the families who are here, the students who are here. I pray for them, O oh Lord. I pray that you continue to bless them, that they will be able to see and believe, to walk with you and in you. I pray all these things, O oh Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, as our Lord and our Savior. Amen. Let us now do our communion, and I encourage those who are in a relationship with the Lord with God to join us in our communion. For those can declare that Jesus is my Lord and my Savior. Ang ilang pagtuong na Jesus is my Lord and my Savior. For those who have answered, Yes, Lord, here I am. It is worth it to follow you, Jesus Christ. And for those na wala pa, that's okay. Pwede na mo dili mo join sa communion. But for those who are in a relationship with God who said yes to the calling of God, who have faith in the Lord, 
I want us to remember how great our God is. Because communion is a remembrance of our salvation. I want us to, to remember and imagine how Jesus broke the bread into pieces and said in 1 Corinthians, this is my body which is for you. This should remind us of the penalty of our sin as each sin broke his body bit by bit. Yet Jesus said, this is for you. Then Jesus added, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. This should remind us that his blood was spilled for our salvation. It was not an easy or simple price. And if we have doubted God's love, if we have failed to believe, let us take a moment of silence to pray, to pause, and ask for forgiveness. As we take this communion, oh Lord, I pray, Lord God, to believe you. And so our hearts are God, purify our hearts. Pray, Lord God, for all the things that are so glorified, so be to us, Lord, that we may ask our forgiveness and make you some good God. Father, forgive us, O oh Lord. Purify us, O oh Lord, as we do our communion. I pray, O oh Lord, that you reveal to us, Lord God, ang mga sala nga dapat na mong maibawan, Lord. Ang mga sala nga dapat ni mo take action, O oh Lord God, not just to ask for forgiveness sa imo, Lord, but to take action, O oh Lord. Forgive us, O oh Lord, for doubting your love. Forgive each and every one, O oh Lord, even those people who are not here. We are praying for them. And as we take the bread, May we be reminded that the body of Jesus was broken for our salvation. Let's eat the bread. And as we take the cup, may we be reminded that the blood of Jesus was spilled for our salvation. Let's drink the juice. Father, such remembrance, O oh Lord God, to remember and to remind us that it's your body and your blood for us to receive salvation. That should have been us, O oh Lord, to be on that cross. Dapat kami tong gilansang, O Lord, because we are sinners and we deserve it. But yet, because of your love, your grace, and your mercy, You have forgiven us. You have paid the penalty of our sin. And we're so grateful, O oh Lord, for this reminder that we are one body because of your blood and your body. Because of who you are. And we submit to you, Lord God, this life that we have. And I pray all these things in the name of Jesus Christ.